Our next speaker is Saul Gonzalez Macia. Saul, can you please share your screen and turn on your microphone and your camera? Saul is from James Cook University and his talk is on ecological patterns of distribution and cover of sponges and ascidians on coral reefs in Kimby Bay. Thank you very much, Saul. Mm, hello. Uh, hello. Can you, can you see me and hear me properly? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Lana. Well, today I'm going to talk about something that is quite unusual for coral reefs, and this is the ecology and distribution patterns of sponges and ascidians. And why? Oh, sorry, I didn't start my video. Mm. Hmm. I will try again. I don't know what's going Did on. You, I think you've turned off your video, so. I. Mm. Can you try starting your video again? Yeah. Uh, bottom of the screen, you'll see a start video button. Bottom of the Zoom screen. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, or, yeah. so we can see your screen share fine. So if you'd yeah. like to just begin your presentation without your video on, that's okay too. Mm. Well, as I was saying, I was going to talk about the ecology and distribution patterns of sponges and ascidians, which is quite an unusual topic today, because, but it's necessary because we know that, as Kevin mentioned, coral reefs are changing, and these changes are due to many stressors around the world. So we have seen in the last years that these stressors can impact severely tropical reef systems around the world, and sometimes they can affect up to 30% or more of the corals. If they are lucky, they can return to the original state, but sometimes they cannot, and they move towards alternative stable states, which are states that are dominated by other organisms. So far, we know that coral reefs can turn into algae-dominated systems, also cyanobacteria and sponges and ascidians. I have two examples that I want to share with you about sponges and ascidians overgrowing corals. And in this case, the first one is the sponge Terpios oshinota, also known as the black disease, which is able to eat the coral. And it was first recorded in Guam, that is on the map, the green dot with the black outline that you can see over there. And after that, it has been reported in multiple spots all around the Indo-Pacific, covering up to 30% of the substratum. The other example is the Acidium tridentum solidum, which was first reported in Curaçao, and that was in the Caribbean, it's the red spot that you can see on the map. And after monitoring the abundance of the Acidium for 15 years, they reported a 900% increase which is quite relevant and that's why it's necessary to understand better what's the role of these organisms in coral reef environments. But we do not know much about sponges and ascidians. Basically, we know that they are ancient organisms, strong space competitors, especially in environments that are space limited, like coral reef systems, and also that they engage in complex interactions with other invertebrates and also with vertebrates. But one aspect of these groups that is very remarkable is the diversity. Actually, sponges have 10,000 species recorded so far. And this map was constructed eight years ago, showing some hotspots of biodiversity for sponges. However, the main conclusion of, those us, of the authors at that time was that there were deep gaps in the knowledge of sponges in tropical systems and that they expected that with more studies, we could shift those hot spots towards the tropics. This is the same idea for ascidians. Ascidians is a very rich group in terms of species with 6,000 species recorded so far, and that is still more than the hard coral species that we know. However, it's clear on this map that there are very deep gaps in the knowledge of species richness for ascidians. So apart from the gaps in richness that we have for both groups, 
we also know very little about the other aspects of the ecology of these groups. This is a graph in which I want to show you what's the cover of the sponges by biogeographical region. And in this image, we can see that basically a sponge cover is less than 10%. However, we have very important outliers here that are quite interesting because we can see that sometimes sponges can cover more than 20% and up to 75% of the substrata. That indicates that in this case, these coral reef systems are no longer coral reef systems, but maybe sponge dominated environments. For acidians, the information is dispersed and they use different metrics to measure abundance. So it's quite difficult to compare and show a similar image about acidians covered in the tropics. But we have a very strong information about the acidian cover in the area that I am going to study. In the last 20 years, they have been recording the cover of acidians in Kimby Bay. And usually, acidian cover is less than 1%. However, in 2014, in the reef called Otto's Reef, which is with the green uh, color on the, on the graph, there was a strong outbreak of acidians and they reached a maximum of 20% in 2017. So it is now important to start filling the gaps in knowledge that we have regarding species richness of sponges and acidians and also their ecology. That's why the main goal of my research was to describe the community of sponges and acidians in Kimby Bay and to assess some changes in cover by exposure and depth this is the area in which we work, and you can see on the map highlighted on green, the inshore reefs that I studied, and also um, a, the six inshore reefs that I study, and on also it is not at scale, but you can see a representation of Otto's Reef that is more to the right. Basically, the sampling design that we follow was the, this one. We, in each reef, we selected a landward and seaward side. Landward side is usually more exposed to sediments and wave action, and the seaward side is totally the opposite. Less exposure to sediments and more exposure to wave action. Also, we have three depths, five, 10, and 15 meters, and within each depth, we establish four transects. The method that we used to measure the sponge cover was the line point intercept, and each transect was 15 meters length, and it has 100 random points. And we measured what was the cover of the substrata under that point. So our results indicate basically that still corals are the dominant category in inshore reefs of Kimby Bay, and also that sponges as a group represent 13% of it. In this graph, you can see the cover on the X axis and the categories on the Y axis. And also it's important to see that the sponges are divided by morphological groups and highlighted on yellow in the graph showing massive sponges, erect sponges and encrusting sponges. Encrusting sponges are quite, quite important and they represent 9% within the category sponges. Also, we wanted to divide this information by the factors that I mentioned, considering the reef, the exposure, and the depth. And in this graph, we can see the interaction between the three factors and the sponge cover. It, it is very interesting to see that at first glance, we can detect some patterns by size or exposure and also by depth. But were they statistically significant? Well, basically, some of them were. In this case, when we consider exposure, reefs in Hanging Gardens and Matanejuba had higher sponge cover on the seaward side than on the landward side. And also, when we consider the factor depth, we saw that in some reefs, there were changes in sponge cover based on depth. We wanted to repeat the same system for the acidians, however, in the case of the acidians, we detected that the cover was very low, less than 2% usually, 
and the distribution was patchy, so we were unable to test this statistically. Basically, we can see that for sponges, um, depth and exposure plays an important role, but it depends on the reefs. And for acidians, at least in the inshore reefs, it's very difficult to establish some pattern. However, the perspective was completely different when we check uh, acidian cover in autos reef. In this case, corals are still the most dominant category, but we can see that acidians represent 27% of the substrata and, that, and are the second most important category. So this complete change that could indicate that there is a shift from coral dominated environment towards an acidian dominated environment in this reef gives us the opportunity to also test what is the influence of acidian cover in coral reef systems and in reef associated fishes. That's why we are conducting additional experiments to understand what's the response of fishes towards different covers of the substrata. In this case, we have, for the first experiment, a, a control quadrat or 12 control quadrats of three by three meters that have a low acidant cover and some that had medium acidant cover that was between 15 to 25 uh, percent cover and high that was more than 35 percent cover. Also, we had another experiment in which we remove the acidians from each quadrat and we could see, we will assess what are the responses of fishes towards changes in the substrata after we remove all the acidians. So these are ongoing experiments and I do not have the results to show you what's happening so far, but I will be happy to share them maybe in the future. So basically we can see that sponges cover 30% of the substrata in initial reefs and encrusting sponges are the most important group. Also that exposure and depth can affect sponge cover, but the effect will always depend on the reef that is being studied. And that acidians represent a minor element of the substrata in inshore reefs. But if we move offshore, offshore we can see that in autos, they are one of the most dominant groups. That's why the next step in my research will be to quantify interactions between sponges and corals and acidians and corals, and also to assess what's the impact that these organisms can have in reef associated fishes. And finally, I would like to test how sponges can regulate or modify the habitat complexity and eventually affect reef associated fishes. I would like to thank many institutions and people that has been supporting me, especially my volunteers during fieldwork, Marine Tor and Gina Tang, which were very, very diligent and helped me a lot during the design of the experiments and collecting the data. If you have any question, I will be happy to answer them. <laughs>